Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. We are looking at 10 activities to add depth and breadth or depth and dimension to word knowledge. Concept maps, concept map, anything that shows the word and relationship to other words. And you're limited only by your imagination there. Get them up on the wall, teach them as both pre and post, and you can eventually get students to create their own concept maps. Works great if they uh, are working in small group because the conversation that ensues adds depth and dimension. You will see that teaching new knowledge and vocabulary go hand in hand. Pictures and diagrams, again, use them to teach as a pre-reading, post-reading, and eventually students can create their own. Teaching knowledge, concepts, and vocabulary go hand in hand. Pre-reading, post-reading, okay? Synonyms and associations, adding depth and breadth. Students find or are given a new and interesting word in the context of a sentence, and then they have to find synonyms, either words or phrases that mean about the same thing, and things they associate with that to provide scaffolding. So you may have to provide a synonym box and have students choose two or three synonyms. And this works best in small group. Here's another example. She could play effortlessly, words that mean about the same here and then around the outside, things the child or children associate with effortlessly. This works great as a small group activity. You give them thesarsis, you teach them how to use the synonym function on their computer. They can choose the synonyms and the associations. It makes a great poster bulletin board. Put it up on the board. Word wall, anywhere that shows common words, it's on the wall someplace and the various uh, groups that they fall into. Close activity develops their ability to use context, and we learn the majority of our words in a context, so it makes sense to teach them how to use context. Journals or word books simply have them record interesting, important, or unknown words in their journal, record the sentence, and then have them list alternatives. Morphological analysis, simply teaching prefixes, suffixes, and root words. Categories, I love this one, provide two or three target words, a whole bunch of related words there. Give them the words, students have to decide which category they go into. This can be a game activity, all right? Connect the two, pre and post. Here are the target words, list related to it, have them draw the line, post, see if they need to do any corrections, keep it fun. Oh, this is fun. The silent spot and the noisy spot. You have a list of vocabulary words, a word picture. Students are given a word, and they have 15 seconds to try to get the group to say the word. Uh, the, if the noisy spot is where they can actually say words to get them to, to, to say the word. The silent spot is like charades, where they do gestures to get them to say the word. I like the noisy spot better because it gets them using synonyms and words. Very quickly, 10 simple activities.